A new bill is being pushed by Congress, and it could help many millions of families across the country. Folks, the Democrats have announced they want to update their plan for national paid family and medical leave. Recipients of SSDI or unemployment benefits also may be able to qualify for additional financial leave. And many workers may need to take some leave at some point to address their own health needs or to care for a loved one. Yet whether workers have access to those benefits is up to the employer or state. This week, Democrats in Washington, D.C. reinstated their push to create a national program just to give every worker access to paid family and medical leave. The Senate Democrats, Kristen Gillibrand, have told CNBC that after 10 years fighting for paid leave, we are still only the only industrialized nation without this essential program. And Gillibrand and one of the Democratic representatives are putting forward an updated version of the Family Act, which would just provide for a paid family leave. The new version of the proposal comes after Democrats had previously reduced the proposal to four weeks leave, with the hopes of getting it included in a broader package. The bill now includes partial income for up to 12 weeks of leave, and the typical full-time worker would earn about two-thirds of the normal wages, while the low-wage workers would be compensated for around 85%. The plan covers leave for workers and family members on serious health conditions or the birth of the adoption of a child. The bill would only cover any worker who has earned at least two grand in the past year, regardless of whether those earnings are covered by Social Security taxes. It would also eliminate an unpaid waiting period for benefits, which previously made it so benefits were not available for the first five days of caregiving. The proposal would be enough to pay for 0.4% payroll tax that would apply to the Medicare tax but wage base. Workers would still be able to pay, receive paid leave through state programs as long as the state can demonstrate that they're at least generous as the federal program is. One thing I know for sure, folks, is that Joe Biden can definitely do more for the people and send out stimulus payments all in 2023. Research has shown that enacting a federal paid family leave program would have positive benefits. Workers missed out on roughly $28 billion more in wages between March 2020 and February 2022, compared with the previous two years before that. But the challenge is that getting bipartisan support agreement is a hard, difficult thing to do. And that's because of one thing. The Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said today that he stresses the banking sector could mean that interest rates won't have to be as high to control inflation. And the central bank leader noted that Fed initiatives used to deal with problems at mid-sized banks have mostly halted worst-case scenarios from transpiring into an even worse-case scenario. Now, with these falls... He noted that the problems in certain banks have caused difficulties in the economy. But officials have still stressed that rate hikes operate with a lag of a year or more. So, with this policy, it might not even, might not even be completely circulated through the economy. And economists, including those of the Fed itself, have long been predicting that the rate hikes would pull the economy into at least a shallow, shallow recession. People. Um, it has historic reductions in spending consequential reforms that will lift people out of poverty into the workforce, rein in government overreach. There are no new taxes, no new government programs. There's a lot more within the bill. We still have more work to do tonight to finish all the uh, writing of it. I do want to take a moment, though. I do want to thank Garrett Graves and Patrick McHenry for all their work on this and uh, for all the work that we're going to continue to do tonight. I know you'll have a lot of questions. I'm not going to take them tonight. Out of respect, I want to brief our members about where we currently are. Biden is also hosting a press conference this week on nutrition and health, the first by the White House since 1969. So this conference will also highlight the need for access to better food, healthier food, and exercise. Over the years, cuts to federal programs, coupled with stigmas over welfare and big changes to how food was made, has also caused a decline in access to food. According to the FDA, around 10% of households in the United States have suffered from food insecurity, meaning they were certain they would not get enough food to feed themselves or their family because they liked money. And under the White House plan, SNAP program eligibility will be expanded. Children will get better access to free meals, and summer benefits will be extended to more school children. This is the gentleman from Connecticut. Seek recognition. I rise and extend my remarks and uh, to compliment you Madam Speaker of Bordeaux, on your service to this great nation of ours, I have very much enjoyed the privilege and honor of serving with you. I uh, also wanted to rise and thank the, uh, the clerk's office for all the work that you do day in 
and day out. Pardon? Is the gentleman seeking to address the House for one minute? Yes, I am. Can I seek to ri- revise and extend my remarks minute. and repeat again, uh, Madam Speaker, how much I have enjoyed working with Speaker Bordeaux and for her service to her country. I know many Americans have been anxiously waiting for our Congress to approve new pieces of legislation that will boost the monthly benefit payments. Nearly 9 in 10 Americans ages 65 and older currently receive the Social Security benefits, and the program represents an important source of income for the vast majority of those beneficiaries. So for that reason, many seniors on Social Security are awaiting two important pieces of information. The first is the COLA for 2023, and the second is the Medicare Part B premium for 2023. The Social Security Administration implements a COLA each year to protect the buying power of benefits from inflation, but the Social Security Administration system is not perfect, and for instance, it enacted a 5.9% COLA in 2022. But inflation has topped 5.9% every month since that decision was made, meaning seniors effectively took a pay cut this year. On the bright side, the Senior Citizens League estimates that seniors will receive an estimated 8.7% of COLA in 2023, that's the largest COLA in the last 40 years. In that scenario, the average retired worker will receive an extra $145 a month. However, the official COLA cannot be calculated until December, and so inflation data is not available yet. The average monthly Social Security benefits for retirees was recently around $1,600, or about $20,000 per year, and that average is around $1,700, and so this is plenty of money for people to collect for fuel and pay their bills. But a new proposal would also change the way. The benefits are calculated and potentially putting more money into the pockets of beneficiaries. Democratic Representative John Larson has introduced a legislation called Social Security 2011. Its new bill, everybody, would also, among other things, would discontinue the use of the CPIW to determine your Social Security benefits. Instead, the bill would also change the calculations based on the Consumer Price Index for Elderly, which places greater emphasis on the cost for food, housing, a medical and apparel, apparel and medical care. The bill would also provide a benefit bump for current and new Social Security beneficiaries, including those who are receiving retirement, disability, or dependent benefits. The Department of Finance is now working on getting relief for the next round of people who may have been exempt from filing due to income level, pension, or Social Security. State officials have said, using databases, we will send out more checks between now and the middle of October. And my hope is that we may get another 50 to 100,000 additional checks using these methods. The state suggests that anyone who has not received a check to find out if there has been mailed and to review the current criteria for residents receiving a second round of rebate. Now, a huge monthly benefit boost, everybody, is coming to everybody for Social Security, SI, and 